Hello you stupendous people. Welcome to this channel. Today I'm talking about how crazy it is. How crazy is it? We will talk all about it on the other side. So it started, you know, the astrologers were talking about this. July was always going to be hot and it is hot here in Spain. Now it's in August, but it's bloody hot. And July was bloody hot too. But that's not the hot that they were talking about. They were saying hot to trot in August, pretty hot as well. And boy, are we seeing that. I mean, how crazy. Since the, the attempted assassination on Trump, what has happened? What, what has, it's just gone tits up everywhere. It's like this, I don't know. It's like somebody took the hornet's nest and give it a good shake and threw it on the ground and then said, there you go, off you go. That's it. It's absolutely incredible. And lots of people, I have seen umpteen videos of people saying the timeline has shifted. Have you heard that? The timeline has shifted. And some people are saying, yeah, the time that we've shifted from this timeline to this one, or the timelines have converged or whatever. It's all about timelines. And I think it's because people can feel this incredible shift. It's like a, like a, a sea change. So I asked the emissaries, I said, have, you know, have the timeline shifted? And they said, it would be a better way to say that the timeline has strengthened. There's been an, a tremendous influx of energy that's making it very strong. And what they're saying is the timeline strength is giving people strength. It's giving people strength to speak out. How hard have the bodies worked to suppress free speech, to suppress the ability? It's not the ability, we've all got the ability to make people scared of speaking out. That's basically where we've been. And I've heard lots and lots of people just lately going, I've got to speak out before I was scared to give my opinion, but now I've got to. And that's what the emissaries are saying, that this, this strengthening of the timeline is allowing people to speak out that wouldn't necessarily speak out. Or the people who would speak out are now saying stuff that you just wouldn't hear before. I'll give you some examples of some things that I've heard. I just saw a snippet of Joe Rogan's new comedy sketch thing that he's doing. And he was saying that since the, the planned stroke demic, before that, he didn't have much of an idea. Since then, he reeled off all of the conspiracy. He said, I believe everything now. And he made a joke about Obama's wife and, a, and an appendage, and then he took it back. But he said it, okay? He said it. That would have been unheard of before. But he's, he just rolled it all out. I'll give you another example. Whatever you think of Zuckerberg, whatever you think of him, okay? He was being interviewed and he said, seeing what Trump did after the attempted assassination was the most badass thing I've ever seen. And he's phoned him and said he's gonna support him, okay? Now, it, it doesn't matter what you think of him. It doesn't matter, I'm sure, you know, uh, there's a lot going on there. But he said it out loud. I watched a, a, what that blonde American senator uh, who's very outspoken and she, I mean, she's war. She's got un par de cojones. And she's been interviewed by somebody from the BBC who was extremely horrible to her. And she's just chatting away and, and, and she started to get angry. And in the end, she just said, look, I tell you what, why don't you just fuck off? Why, when? Would we have heard that before? When would we have heard that? I mean, they would be angry or whatever. I heard Nigel Farage getting interviewed with another, I think BBC again, a BBC. Oh my God. Uh, and they were, they were jabbing him. They were saying, why are you here for, um, because Trump's been, uh, had an attempt at assassination. When you're a politician, and you should be looking after your constitution, your, your const, const, what's it called? Your people in that place, yeah? And he said, what business is it of yours? 
what business is it of yours? And it was really abrupt, like, just bugger off. I'm seeing this over and over again with people. Now, these are the people who have public face, but I'm also seeing it with everybody. This strength, this inner strength of, it's time to speak out. I'm going to speak out. I can't keep quiet anymore. And it's beautiful. And this is because the timeline is, is being strengthened. By whom, by what, I don't know, but it's strong. However, the emissaries went on to say this, and I thought it was really interesting. Because they said, as people get stronger, they know people are getting stronger, they know what's happened with the timeline. And so they are gonna up their game. And they said, it's, we're getting to a point where instead of being covert, it's gonna be overt. It's gonna be obvious. And they suggested this, and let's see what happens. Let's see if this happens. What they said is that the baddies are going to reach a point where they are gonna call for a division. They're gonna call people to their side and they are going to openly, and I'm talking about this, you know, we are aligned with Lucifer, the light, God, you know, with all of that. They are gonna overtly tell you that's what the emissary said. And they are going to say, they're going to offer people, come to us for protection, come to us because we can give you everything. And there was a, this inference about, you know, the Antichrist and the person who's going to come and be able to, to perform magical acts and do wonderful things, Project Bluebeam, blah, blah, blah. And they, they said that they are going to be just overt about it. They're not going to hide it anymore. I mean, already, the, you know, look at the... <laughs> Look at the Olympic game beginnings. You know, you can't get much more overt than that. Massive pushback, massive pushback. But what the emissaries are saying is that they are just going to say, we are good, they're bad. And they're going to ask people to come and join them and accept, I suppose, accept Lucifer as the one and only true God. And they're going to, they, they, the emissary said this, they're going to try and turn, well, they're going to, they, they don't need to try, turn those people against us. So that might be, you know, you would say Christians. I mean, the witnesses, the Jehovah's Witnesses have always said that they're God's chosen people and that's why they get persecuted. But I think in the grand scheme of things, you know, the, the witnesses have taken the Bible, you know, they haven't taken anything else, just what the Bible says, but they've applied it to themselves only, you know, monopoly on God. But really, I think that's where we're going to be which is those who have faith, I'm not talking about Christianity, but those who have faith will be the baddies. And those who have faith, well, faith in anything other than Lucifer, and those who have faith in Lucifer will be on the good side or the pro profess to be the good side. So let's see, it, it's getting almost to that place where the, there's nothing to hide anymore. They don't need to hide that, yeah, well, you know, like the Masons, you don't find out until later on that they believe their God is, is Lucifer, you know, the God of light. And I think that's where we're gonna get to. That's what the emissaries say. But they're upping their game, they've got to. Why? Because they've got to sort out what's going on. People are getting too strong. People are getting too gobby. Speak in the mind. We don't want that, do we? Well, let's see what happens. Fascinating times, guys. Fascinating. This is just the most interesting series. Much more interesting than any series on Netflix. For sure. I love you all and I'll speak to you all later. Bye-bye. <laughs>